Welcome to another edition of Maria's Ideas Teaches Us to Paint. I'm Alan Levine, The Talking Machine. I co-produce and co-host this show with my great co-host and producer. What's our theme today? Thank you, Alan. Our theme today was inspired by, here's our theme, this is Twilight Pittsburgh. This was inspired by our special friend and guest, Kim Adley, from Passport to Pittsburgh and Characters by Kim. Very creative, wonderful Pittsburgh promoter. And so we designed this for Kim, and she likes blue, too. So we're going to paint this with Kim today. I wore navy blue yeah. in honor of that. Yes. So. And they went black. Yes, we did. <laughs> So let's get started. Very excited All right. to be here. Yes. And yes. That, yes. You want to introduce or say anything to Oh, Say or? your name. Yes. <laughs> say well, my I name. Say, say my I'm name. Kim Adley. <laughs> and, well, thank um, you very much. Yes. And I'm delighted to be here as your special artist guest today and really grateful to be painting a picture of Pittsburgh because I love Pittsburgh. I own a tour company in the What's city. What's it called? Passport to Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's wonderful too. It's amazing. The, the, the gems in Pittsburgh. You're helping everyone discover. There's so many places exactly. in Pittsburgh that we've never seen. It's helping really Pittsburghers nice. and visitors right. to Pittsburgh discover right. the hidden treasures it's, that well, are here in our city. It is fantastic. So, Thank you. All right. So let's get started. We are going to first transfer our design to the canvas. We're using 11 by 14 canvas board. You can use a canvas. You can use a different size but we have the art kits that are available, and if not, we have the description on our YouTube, and uh, the videos have the, dis the description of everything. It's Maria's Ideas Art, and then I also have a 10-minute video that goes with each episode that teaches you how to draw the design if you don't have the transfer. All right, so we have the transfer, the graphite paper, if you ever needed to transfer something, and we're just laying that under the design, and just quickly tracing our design. You don't have to press too terribly hard, just enough to get the design to transfer. And you can check it, see, make sure everything's there. Every once in a while, I'll forget something and I've go back I've done that in. a couple times. Yeah, so and that's okay. Just watch our videos. Yes. And get your kits. Yes, I do have some. I, I assumed that this would be a popular one, too, so I did make some up ahead of time, what too. What a wonderful summer activity to do with your kids right. in the backyard. Oh, sure. Get the kids together and then go on an adventure and visit the point. Exactly. Hold it. Don't forget big <laughs> kids like me. Oh, yeah. This is my birthday month, so this is an honor Aww. to do a painting on my birthday month. And there still are people that have never been to the point. Exactly. Or, or the different areas, like you said, different places that you're helping others discover, which is really great. Even we, places I've never heard of, and I've been here my whole life. You know, I have stories. I grew up in Green Tree, three miles away from downtown. Okay. And I had to take the 3060 Westwood bus <laughs> to get dropped off at the Pittsburgh Press. We went fishing when I was like, seven years old and we were, we were allowed down to go river? downtown guess where we went where? the point yeah you would fit out to fish down there yeah and we we caught a couple blue fish and stuff we had corn dough ball and i wasn't a big uh, <laughs> fish guy but we were there like five or six of us and to show you how the different times we saw hundreds of bottles in the river floating oh, wow. by so oh. we all played sports we had more fun breaking bottles with rocks. Now, I know you can't do that nowadays because yeah. they've cleaned it up. That's a good thing. But we had hundreds of bottles just flying by. So I have great oh memories of the point and when it changed and got better like it is today. Happy to tell you that the rivers of Pittsburgh are the cleanest they've ever been yeah. in yes. 45 years. Over 65 types of fish now in our rivers. And going to the point is just so beautiful and it clean. Is. It and is. the water from the water from the point is not from the river either. It's from an aquifer. The fourth river. An aquifer underneath 
the city that you feeds. are sharp passport to Pittsburgh. Wow, this is called <laughs> tour guide trivia. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> we'll have to keep coming up with. We'll come up with some more too. Maybe about some of the buildings. Of that course. We're or, yes. Yeah. How are you guys doing? I'm Good. coming along. Doing great. Yeah. Just want to make sure I. I think I'm doing I got great, everything. But I'll find out. I did half of mine, and I forgot to move my transfer paper over, so I only had half, so I had to do it again. <laughs> It I happens. forgot yeah, to Yeah, but you mine. are the best. I appreciate what you've helped me with. Thanks. This is my sixth painting. Yes. You're creating your own personal gallery, I'm sure, Alan. Oh, yeah. I got them stacked up right now, but <laughs> come the end of the year, my bedroom's going to have a whole 12 nice. paintings because we're going to do December no matter what. Right. That's great. And Kim's already, mind. she's an artist and so creative, so I don't have to worry about oh. you too much. But we'll check in well, on yes. you and see how you're doing. I love, I know there's always more to learn. There area. is. This is pretty simple. I still need guidance. Yeah, that's okay. Well, I'm going to get started. I think you're almost done, right? Yeah, is that okay? I'm finishing up as we speak. Okay. So, we are painting this design, like I said, inspired by Kim. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, we are going to... Whenever you start with acrylics, typically you'll do the background and, and add your layers on top. For time's sake, we are trying to get this done, say, within 45 minutes, 50 minutes. We're going to do this more in sections, almost like a paint by number, that allows us to complete the painting within a certain amount of time. So we are going to start, we're going to do, a, like I said, a little bit opposite of what I would normally do if I was painting this and I had all day. So we're going to start with the yellow, the golden color, a great color, Pittsburgh. And I'm golden going, triangle. Yes. I'm going to grab my half inch flat shader. Yes. And you can see this will go nicely in between the buildings. And we're going to start with the yellow and, and keep this brighter behind the buildings, like you see here. This can be a sunrise or sunset. Mm -hmm. It's always brighter at the horizon. So we're going to put the yellow behind the buildings, around the buildings, and then we'll also paint in the other yellow areas just to keep the, the with the white underneath, that will keep that, that yellow brighter. If we had a different color under there or painted across the whole sky first, our yellow would, would be a little dingier. So let's get that color Question, on. when using acrylics, do you dip in water first? Yes, so okay. I usually wet the brush, take off the excess water, I had to get rid of a little skin on my yellow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it oh, was, there was a look. It, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. That's why I didn't dip it in the water because I didn't want okay, to mess up yes. too much. I've learned a couple things oh, in yeah. life, especially watching you. And Definitely. Now we're going to load the brush. I usually try not to get the paint into the ferrule of the brush, which I always do, and then your brush bristles kind of spread apart. But you load your brush, and I usually tap it on my palette just to test it and make sure that that paint is worked into the bristles and will give me good coverage. If you don't have enough paint on your brush, you'll get some skipping and spacing on the canvas, but you don't want too much that it's going to leave big blobs of paint either. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to, you can lay your brush down flat like this and just pull your hand. You can see if you just pull it around, Ooh. the edge of the brush creates that nice line. You can also hold the brush vertically this way to create a line. Just use the corner of the brush. You can lay the brush down, twit, just turning your hand in different directions and cut in around the buildings and then just blend the yellow out. Now, if you look at the design, where you end the yellow, instead of making it a straight line across, give it a little flare in the direction that we're going to paint the blue because that's going to blend and we want the two colors to transition so that that paint flow that you're going to create with your sky pattern is how you want to Thanks lay for the those yellow insights. yeah I see how know. i'm just like not that it has to look just like that but I, i'm going to you're, make this free come up in a little some of a swooping pattern just so that it will visually uh, transition nicely with the blue. And then this part probably doesn't matter as much. And again, I'm cutting in. You can see you can use the corner of the brush like this and then just pull your hand around. And if you go over some of these pencil lines or graphite lines, it's okay. You can see them through the yellow. 
and we definitely. I found that out. I yeah. was hesitant. No, you can go right across. You really don't even have to um, cut in around them as much. I'm going to put a little bit of the yellow around the the building. Does anybody know what this tallest building is here? Uh, UPMC that's a U now. United <laughs> States Steel Tower yes. to all Pittsburghers. Yes. But yes, the UPMC building, one of three buildings in the city <laughs> made of the product that the company produced. And and made it, of steel. And it rusts. Yes, it does. It rusts you naturally. can tell you're a pro with the tour guides. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's shaped like a triangle, too. Did you know that? Yes. yes. Yeah. I remember the top of the triangle restaurant. That was just great. Oh, yeah. oh it was wonderful. Those were the days. And we're also going to paint the bridges. And we're doing this so that it allows the yellow to dry. If it doesn't dry and we get into the blue areas, we'll get some green tones, and that's okay if that happens, but I'm going to add my yellow in, uh, on the bridges and then along the point area. So to do these lines, these vertical lines for the bridge, I held the brush again vertically and just put the edge of the brush down and then pull and that gives you a nice line. If you press hard, it'll give you a wider line. Narrower, it'll give you a thinner line. And we're just coming in and painting I along. I didn't realize how speedy you are. I have to yeah. kick it up and if I If I wasn't teaching this, I would probably do this painting in about 10 minutes. 10, Ten minutes? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I've been painting a long time and doing custom murals and artwork, so if I go into someone's home or business, I have maybe a day or two to do a 40-foot mural. So I'm used wow, to you're work, a speedster. like thinking ahead, five steps ahead, and then also just just moving quickly. So I'm actually, I have to slow it down for the classes. So. Well, I appreciate what you've been doing yeah. for six months now with me. Yeah, and I have to think about what I'm doing. It's, it's automatic when you do something for a long time. Right. You don't think, oh, I'm holding the brush this way or whatever. So I do have to slow it down and kind of think about well, as what long I'm as doing. you tell me and others, because yeah. I've learned with that straight edge sure. to be able to do that. Yeah. And, and you can hold, I hold my brush sort of, like I'd say, in the middle, however you would uh, hold a pencil or a pen. Yeah. If you're a little lower, that's okay, but it, you need to be able to swing the brush you a little. to it. Yes, and also to give it a little movement. And um, so it's usually a little easier. And also, I had a tendency when I first started painting, I would squeeze that brush and my hands would get, my fingers Cramped. would start to ache. And I'm like, why is that happening? But I was squeezing the brush too hard. So just lightly hold, you almost want to have a little, a little play in there and yeah. just kind of hold the brush. And so let's see, we're going to do all of the yellow. We're not doing the yellow in the water yet. Okay, but we're going to do the crescent moon the same thing here. I'm coming in and I'm just laying my brush down the edge of the brush and just pulling it around just like that. We'll do the crescent moon. And this is where the shape of the brush that you choose helps. This half incher. Yes. Yeah. You just lay it down. Yep. I'm, I'm catching a little bit. Yeah, you're bit. good. And again, if it goes beyond, that's okay. We're painting orange around there anyway. And then for the circles in the sky, you don't have to paint them all yellow, but you can if, if it's easier. We're going to put the yellow, white, and blue in circles. Oh but I'm goodness. just kind of, just do a quick, like that. I'll leave a little white in the center because I know we're put, putting uh, the white in there anyway. But if you end up covering it, that's okay. We'll add the okay. white. And then the little yellow dots, we're going to do that later. And thank you for your tips. Yeah, so you can see we have around the buildings, the bridges, the point and then oh, also around the fountain that little curved Let's see here well oh, Kim's doing you're good oh yeah she's a pro <laughs> and then the the little uh, area around the fountain also you can look at your little reference picture and that's it for the, the yellow the gold I'm trying to catch up so now black and gold is the color of the, our, our teams, teams, but it's really the colors of Pittsburgh. Yes, yes it is. And they yeah. adopted the colors, right? It came yes. From the flag. Right. Came from William Pitt's yes. uh, coat of arms. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sir William Pitt, who uh, well, bequeathed. We were founded in 1754. Yes. And we took over Fort Duquesne from the French. And George Washington and a few other guys were here. And I know that Pittsburgh is my place 
to live, uh, my favorite place to live ever. That's my little bit of uh, there you knowledge, Pittsburgh too. knowledge there. Yes. Love the people, love the mix of people. Well, growing up in Green Tree, the second oldest building in Pittsburgh is the Stone Tavern oh, in yeah. the West End. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. I can go they on, I, I could be a co-host on the tour. They say they, that. You right, could. They, I think someone was going to tear it down years they ago. Were. Oh, they're they, redoing it. Yeah. I'm making a tavern yeah. out of it, I believe. Yeah. Because yeah. that was important in the so Whiskey Rebellion. Great oh, old yeah. house, uh, redone um, in um, Hazelwood, too. Woods Run. Woods, yeah. yes. Yeah, the Woods. Woods house. How, how, he was the surveyor of Pittsburgh. And they gave him a farm right outside of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's the oldest residential house in Pittsburgh. Wow. Yes. And that's what's nice she about... She can co-sign this. Oh, thing. I know. That's what, what's so We're nice going about toe Pittsburgh. To toe. Well, but we have <laughs> the historic places and homes and buildings in with the new mix. The, the, the mix is really yeah. nice as character and interest to our little towns and neighborhoods. So oh, I, agree. I like it. You know, I'm a history guy, so thank I you know. for it. I usually have a muzzle on, no offense, but no, you're it good. came out today. No, you're good. <laughs> All right, so I'm done with my the gold color. I rinsed my brush, and I'm still using the same brush, but I'm going to rinse that gold and then take that extra water off. Now, we're going to work on the sky, and this the acrylic dry really quickly. So the yellow should be dry by the time I get down there. If not, I might get a little bit of green, hints of green, and that's okay. Different tones in the sky, but I think it will be all right. Now, I we can start with the lighter blue or we can start with the darker blue, but I'm going to start with the darker blue and then add the lighter blue on top. So I have an aqua color here, and I have the ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue is a warmer, Blue. Mine's you, a little different tray, so I'll yeah. turn in with Yes, yeah. that's the blue. Now, the design looks more like a powder blue. If you want this to look like that, just mix some white with the ultramarine blue and you'll get this tone. If you introduce a little bit of that aqua, which, which I'm going to do both, so I think I'm going to mix both to give it not such a baby blue color, but a little bit of a warmer powder blue. So, what Whoa. I'm going to do, but first I'm mixing the dark. So we're using the ultramarine blue first, then I'll come in with my mixture for the blue. So we'll dip into the dark blue. And if you look at the design, we're just going, we're not covering the whole background. We're just laying in brush strokes in the pattern that you choose for your sky. So I'm going first around, I'm going to leave some space around that yellow. I'm just coming around like this. And you can see I'm leaving white in between just very loosely add some of that blue. And then you can bring it down here, just in little, just keep your the, the direction and, and kind of tail off with different shapes, just to keep a nice pattern in the sky. We're, we'll add the lighter blue, we'll add the darker um, and the orange too. So again, we can always cover up some of this darker blue if it, if it comes on too strong and you want to lighten it up, the lighter, color will cover this as well. So I'm kind of coming around, so I'm getting my circles, but then at where you your circle ends, just do like a couple little brush strokes so it's not just a harsh line all the way around. So you can okay. see I'm just kind of doing something like that. And then I'm coming around, I'm going to like right up in here. I want this to be a little darker up in the corner. The sky is usually, well, always darker, higher in the, in the sky away from the horizon. So I'm going to add some of that darker blue at the top. Wow. And you could see. So instead of just bringing it straight across, I'm going to bring this down and just like leave the soften. Brush right there, nice yeah, and just soften the edges a little bit. And by leaving that white in between, that gives me an idea of where the light blue is going, but also the pattern. It, it shows me my pattern. So your pattern's probably going to look different than mine, and that's fine. Oh, I know it will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would say, like, right here, instead of, yeah, so just keep Coming some around. of it. And you can make them shorter as you go around, and then just so do a little one. And just create, like, a little bit of a pattern. And then if you turn your brush this way, Alan on its edge you can get ah. you can do something like that and that just gives it some movement yeah there you go and then just do maybe a smaller one a smaller one okay. and then um, if you want the circles if they're not as round as you'd like we can clean that up and fix them up with the other colors 
So I'm just going to come right around here. Kim's looks great. Thank you. All right. And then the lesson's paid off for you, my fun. friend. <laughs> well, it's very different than watercolor. <laughs> but, it uh, is. She yeah. warned you about that. She did. And what's nice about this is the acrylics dry really quickly. So if you don't like something about it, you can add you can change the light it. and the yes. dark again over top of it. But usually you start, you, you paint dark to light. And, and with the watercolors, that's the opposite. You go light and then keep adding dark. And you have to leave the white spaces where ours, we're leaving the white space because we want it to be a clean white um, color. And then we put the yellow on top of the white because they, we wanted the yellow to be as bright as possible. And if we had, if we painted our sky first, we'd have blue under there and then we'd have to prime out the areas to get that bright gold. And you can see right here too, Alan, see I'm mixing and yeah, Kim has jumped, I was adding looking, like yeah. just a couple little, try to connect the colors, try, like kind of um, cross pollinate the colors a little. Put some blue in the yellow and yellow on top of it, like get them to where they mix and that will make the nice transition for the sky. And then I'm coming in and I'm just doing one brush stroke in between those vertical lines in the bridge because the water, you'd see the water through there. And then I'm coming along and I'm going to paint my water and I'll make sure you guys catch up with me, but I'm just showing this first. You carry on. Yeah, so I'm going to do, let's see, I'm going to take my brush and put that flat edge up against this straight area and just pull my hand around. That's how you get that nice straight edge and just pull it across like that. And while this is wet, we are going to pull some of this blue down. And now you can see I'm, I'm putting the heavier blue up top and I'm pulling down and lift up on your brush, just like that. And you want that to feather out at the bottom. So when you guys get to that, let me know. We could, I can show you again. In fact, I'll I'm show you. I'll show yet. you here on the plate too. So if this is my line, we're going to load the brush. Make sure you have a generous amount of paint on the brush and you just push down and you pull and you lift up. So I'm just doing, you can see if I do it quicker. Yeah. And then you can go, you can do maybe four or five different brush strokes with that same amount of paint on your brush. It's just like that. And you can practice on your palette okay. too if you need to, just to get the feel of it. Because we want to leave some of the white canvas and we want to leave some areas where the lighter blue is going in there too. And the reason we're doing the vertical line is that's how the reflection of the water would tend to appear. All right, so we have, so it already kind of has a little bit of a vibe, but keep it darker up closer to the gold and whiter at the bottom because the, we just want it to be a little brighter down there. And then the only other thing we have with this dark blue right now would be one little brush stroke in here. That looks good. Yeah, and you can see Kim turned her canvas. That if it's a better angle for your hand, you can do that. Mm -hmm. All right, that's good, Alan. So now grab, no. push down, and pull up it. There you go, perfect. Yep, and then and keep some shorter. Make some shorter, some longer, but like lift it so you don't want the flat. Oh yeah. You don't want that. It's I okay. Didn't. You want to push, yeah. load your brush, and then push down. I need down. help on that. No, teacher. you're good. You're good. So just push down up here, and as soon as you start to move your hands, start coming up already. Yeah, and you can almost lift up quicker. There you go, see, perfect. Oh. That's okay, that's some longer one, shorter one, lift up. Yeah, I would say lift up sooner. Yeah, and just kind of let it, and then barely touch, what you wanna do is just barely touch the canvas as you're bringing uh, okay. it down. Okay, I was too heavy on that. So if I'm pushing, and then. Thank you, yeah, just I like got that. it, and just, just pull up. Yeah, and that, that, and that's good. And then you can um, add, we'll add the other colors in between. So I will, that looks great. Okay. Yes. And then okay. one little right there. Ah, The okay. little blue, there's a little blue streak yeah, right under here. the water. I got you. Just to, just to keep the blue kind of flowing through. Uh, oh, the vertical lines in your bridge too. Yes. Okay. Oh, we didn't do your yellow. Yeah. Some yellow. I'm gonna have to leave that gap. Yeah, I missed that. That's okay. So you can grab, we can add your blue first. I'm still on painting 101. No, you're good. That looks good. Okay. All right, let's see. 
Uh, okay, now I'm going to mix. I'm using the same brush because we want that same. Actually, I take that back. We are going to use, and, and let me know if you guys need me or need me to slow down too, but um, we're going to mix the blue, and we're using the half inch filbert shader. It has the curved top or top of the bristles. So I'm going to mix, it's a powder blue, but it has a little warmth to it. So I'm going to add white to my palette first. When you're mixing a color with white, always start with a light color first. If you start with a dark color, you may end up wasting so much paint trying to get it as light as you want. Uh, okay. If you Good start tip. with a light color, you introduce the dark color, and then you just, you know, add a little bit here and there, and you'll be surprised how quickly it becomes the color that you want. So I want the light blue. So you can see this was just the white and the ultramarine blue. And it's okay, but you can see, um, I just feel like I want it a little more that leans toward that robin's egg blue. Mm -hmm. So you can add the aqua. If you don't have the aqua color, you can add a tiny bit of yellow Ooh. because it'll, it'll lean a little more to the green side and that will also give you more of that robin's egg blue. So you can see that that's more of a robin's egg blue. Yeah, it is. And then you can always add some more. I feel like maybe a little bit more white. Acrylics also dry a little darker than they appear. So if you're mixing the color and I say, oh, I really like this, this tone or, or hue on my palette. I like it just as it is, but it's not going to look like that. It's going to be darker. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to add a little bit more white because once it dries, then it will be this color. All right, so acrylics always dry darker. Watercolors dry lighter, which I learned that the hard way as I was learning how to do watercolors and then I kept going in and adding. Oh. So, so you're using start the, with the white. The white, start white, with the white. Aqua. Always start with the light color. White, a generous amount of white because we want this to be, and grab the uh, filbert brush, the curved one. So put your brush, oh, you can I put your it. brush in the water. There it is right there, half inch get the curved filbert. Ones, so start with a generous amount of white, and then add your blue. And usually I add the color next to it, if you add it next, and then bring them together. I'll put but aqua in but this blue, instead of blue, so should I just redo that before No, that's I use fine. It? Just grab, grab your white, Okay. Grab, put the white on the plate, a generous amount, a little bit of blue. So you can see that's pretty dark already, Kim. Yeah. So just add more white. Mm -hmm. This blue is really strong. And if I have more paint here, too, if you need white. And then add a touch of the aqua to where you like the See, color. I, did, I put the aqua in there. No, that's okay. Just mix all of it. The blue, okay. the dark blue, the aqua. Mix them together. So when you mix your paint, you want to flip your brush like this. Flip it back and forth. And Alan likes to smush his brush. I'm not, you know, <laughs> it's not a bad thing, but it's sort of bad thing for your brush a little bit. So look. I'll try to flat. If we it out. flip it like this, when you mix it like this, oh, it keeps okay. the bristles flat. If I you, gotta use if a lighter you, touch. Yeah. Well flip it if you if you push down on the bristles and do this with them, it spreads the bristles out and then the paint goes up in there and then it kinda ruins the brush. Okay. You know. I mean it's okay. I think you need more white. I will a not. lot of white. Yes. That looks good, Kim. Now you can leave it that color if you like it. Mm -hmm. If you want more of the Robin's egg blue, add a little of the aqua. So okay. it's really your choice. You know, you okay. you do whatever you like. The on the design here, it's more of the Robin's egg like this color here that we have. Right. So that was a little bit of the aqua in there. And again, you can always add more. So mix it into where you like it. Probably a little more than that. And then add your white. Now, as you're mixing it's probably going to dry on you. So you can add a tiny bit of water on your palette to reactivate it. All right. Thanks for these tips. Yeah. So I I'm, need them. I know, that's okay. <laughs> we all do. I'm learning too all the time. So now I'm going to come in. I'm going to make sure my brush doesn't have too much paint. It, it, it really had so much from me mixing. I'm flattening that out a little bit because I'm using the edge of my brush again. Now we're coming in. Where am I going with this? Okay. Not the, the circle around the moon. Uh, is going to be orange, so don't go where the orange is. We're going on the white spaces that we left. Okay. In between, and again, keeping that same pattern, and you're you're obviously going to have to go over top of some of that dark blue, and that's yes. okay. We that was intentional. Two blue. That's pretty. You that's like pretty. It? 
You could, if you wanted a little bit more of the robin's egg, I'd still say add a little bit more aqua. Aqua. Yes, aqua. <laughs> aqua or turquoise. There you go. Okay. And it, it will dry a little darker if you want it lighter. Mm -hmm. You just add a little bit more white. And then we're using the brush like this kit on our, our tip, and we're mm -hmm. going to, when you, when you create these brush strokes, if you lift up, say, on one direction as you pull it, you'll get the little tails. Mm -hmm. See, if you do this, and that There's kind of, tail. that's the, the nice, tails. Yeah, yeah, the little tails, and that gives you a nice look, too. So I'm just kind of filling in wherever you feel like your eye, you need it. If you have an area where there's too much dark blue, you could break it up with this. And then also where they transition down to the, the yellow or the gold color. So just keep in mind the pattern that you're creating. So I want this to come down like this. So you can see I'm going over my yellow. I like the, I'm gonna have a little wavy thing happening here. And if we have to, you can also go back in and add the gold again. And we probably will have to after you lay these layers in. It's when you're painting, it's pretty much like taking away, adding, taking away. You just kind of get it all balanced, and and colors do affect how we see the the piece and the composition. So our eye is going to be drawn to the yellow before the blue because of the way our cones and our eyes see the color. So the yellow, we want to make sure it's balanced. If it was all just at the top or in the center, I would go just to the center, which is okay. But I like when the uh, eye is kind of moving around the canvas. So We I'm, appreciate your good eye. Thank you. So I did my sky, but I still feel like there will be places where I think I want to add a little bit of that dark blue here and there. And then I might even add a little bit of yellow again. But I'm, I keep saying yellow. Gold, <laughs> should I say gold? Yes. Gold, it's the gold. Go for the gold. Yes. <laughs> and then I'm doing the same thing on the water. I'll come in, so in the areas where it was maybe a little heavier, like I have it heavier here too, I'm going to do the same thing with the light blue and just pull that down. And I don't, let's see. Initially, I didn't think I wanted any white at the bottom of this canvas, but yeah. it, I don't mind the white. It's because growing it, on you. Yeah, it, you can take it away and add all of the, the lighter blue if you choose to, but I think I'm going to leave some of that white in there. Again, helps to balance the white that we'll have on the fountain and then other areas. Um, we will actually be adding some little white, uh, little water lines too. So let's see. So I have there the blue and then that's it for that. So I'm going to, while you guys are finishing your blue, I'm just going to look at my sky and just see if I want to add, I might want to add a couple little of the dark blue. Okay, so I'm just adding some of my blue just to break up any of the areas that you feel like, no, too much light blue, add the dark blue or add some more yellow. And, and then if you wanted to do this tomorrow, oh. you know, I'm going to give you a kit to take home with you too. You'll oh, have the paint. So you. you can touch it up tomorrow if you want to or the next day or not. So that's what's nice about acrylics. You can just go in and add and touch them up. But you also need to know when to stop, right? Yes. It's, that's the thing with art is you... Can need to know when to stop. And that's a tricky thing. What I complete thing. today, I will stop. <laughs> you can only tease me with tomorrow. No. <laughs> and that's, so I feel like mine, eh, it's okay. We're good there. And, oops, I have one more section here with the dark. All right. So I'm going to, so we're just, you're all you're good there and then add the, your lighter areas down in the water also same thing with the blue the darker blue all right now i am coming in with the black Whoa. on the buildings all right let's see i'm going to show you the, so we're going to paint the buildings solid black and we'll add our little highlights 
And the reason we did the sky first is because we want the buildings to have that nice crisp edge. So they will we'll clean up the edges of the painting as we paint the buildings instead of trying to go around them, around the sky color. Okay. So I'm going to grab my black and I always put my paint on my palette and just load my brush like that to keep the bristles nice and flat. We definitely want these nice and flat because the brush shape is going to create the building shape. So I'm coming in, uh, let's see, I'll start over here. I'm going to lay the brush down and where it is already the shape of the building, just lay it down and pull. Ooh, and then where I need nice to cut in, straight. we'll come in like that. And then I can use my corner. You can grab a smaller liner brush if you need to, but I usually just use the corner of the brush. Whoops. That was a big whoopsie. There was, <laughs> you see that? There's a lot of paint I ended up that. on there. That was a big... You well, got my heavy hand in yeah. this Yeah. All right. I just pulled that over. Okay. There was a lot of paint on there. I didn't see that. It happens. You go with the flow. Yeah. And then these these vertical or horizontal lines, I'm just just using the brush to create the shape and just lay this down like that. Oops. And coming around here. Now the buildings, since we're, we're filling them in and cutting in with all the black, you won't see necessarily where one building starts. It'll merge together. Right. So you can leave a little white line if you want to, just so that you'll know. And I have two blacks, so it doesn't yeah, matter which I just one gave I you extra. Just Thank in you. Case I'll you try to any. use it. Yeah. How's Kim doing over there? Still working on my. It looks great. Yeah take, yeah, take your time. We'll make sure you fit. You Yours get to finish. Yours looks amazing. Oh, Come you on. know. You're Thank too modest. you. And now I'm doing, again, same thing. I'm just cutting. Now, when you paint a straight line, you have to kind of like hold your breath and just go for it. You have okay. to, if you, if you paint it, if you're too slow, your hands will start to wiggle. You, you just have to have the confidence. You lay Keep the brush straight. down and you just, I'm just laying it down and pull. And, and you lay the brush down and let the bristles, when you, when you lay the, brush down you see how they the, they spread out yeah you let them spread out to where you can see as far as they're going and let that be the edge of your building and then just pull your hand and you see you have that very nice straight edge yeah, I have to work you just on that. you just let that you let the brush sit on the Whoop. canvas and you you push down as far as it'll go like this and then just pull and then you let the brush do the work for you I need some more practice on that That's okay <laughs> Practice, Practice makes perfect. Uh, That's why I got the stereo with me here. Yeah. <laughs> so Alan has the blue shirt on today. We were hoping he wore white because we have black on and we were laughing when we were getting started. He's like the, Jono said, he's like the Oreo. <laughs> he's like the cream in the, the, in the Oreo. The double, Oreo. Stuff. the double stuff. Double stuff. Oreo. Well, we went to KO, so that humor sounds That's great. Right. So we filmed this at Jono's Art Studio, which is in the Southside Slopes. Uh, the Tell them the address. Oh, yeah. Okay. It is 1705 Arlington Avenue, and that's Pittsburgh 10. We are at the top of 18th Street, the intersection of Arlington, 18th, and Brownsville Road. So really you easy to get to. this colorful building your whole life. I've yes. been here 42 years in business. Maria's Once ideas. you started two years old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're and, a young superstar. Yeah. But I remember when this was a gas station. And it was then a used car lot. So wow. we have a photograph here in the studio of the trolley, the old time trolley coming up the street in the old cars, you know, back when cars were made of like metal and chrome and I remember very heavy cars, yes. Nothing like a fifty six Chevy. Oh, I know. That's when I was born. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, sure. Okay. So some of these buildings, yeah, they might look if you if if it's a little crooked, it is. It's look gonna it. look like that. I rounded. No, but that's okay. <laughs> and again, this is a painting, so um, just that's fine. Now you can take a straight edge. I would say after this dries, you could take a straight edge and lay it down, and then just get a small amount of paint and yeah. clean up the edges if you choose to. Yeah, I tend to be heavy-handed. Um, so. so you know they don't have to be perfectly straight. It's a painting. It's freehand. Thank you. Yeah, and then for the little points on our that's where I need help our glass castle yes BPG. so you can tell us about that building Kim so I'm just grabbing my 
brush and using just the tip. Second of the three buildings made out of the product that the company produced. Yes. PPG it used to be Pittsburgh Plate Glass, mm -hmm. but now it's uh, PPG Industries and they make more paint now than anything. Yes. Yeah. Uh, of course, the building is uh, looks modern Gothic and six different buildings in the complex made wow. of plate glass and steel. Yes. I, I love their paints built. too. I yes. use their paints. Yes. I do a lot of community projects where uh, I create a design and then they'll be, and I've done this for PPG Industries where we'll have their groups of um, workers come in like a team building event and we use their paints and uh, to create the artwork, which is fun. All right, so we are coming around. I'm filling everything in black. And like I said, I'm going to keep moving, guys. I'll make sure you guys catch up, but I got to make sure I get this all done. You're our leader. You carry yeah. on. Yeah. So I'm. you can see I'm coming around like that suggestion of those little trees and around the fountain. And then I already have black on my paintbrush. So I'm just coming in with a little bit of white and mixing a gray tone. Whoa. And remember, this will dry darker, so keep that. You want it to stand out a little bit from the black. And I'm coming in, and I'm just doing little curved shapes for the suggestion of this little tree mounds, like this. All right, and then I'm going to get back into the black and do a little strip under here. Now, I'm taking a small liner brush, a number five or smaller, a little liner. Whenever you start with a liner, always take your paint and roll the brush like this. And I'm just coming in and just creating that little shape for the, the fountain, just like that. And I'll add a little line here. And it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up. I almost want to see like a looser feel. I have a couple little brush strokes in there. Just trim this up. And then I'm going into my orange because I want to get that done. I'm trying to lay it down and it just goes yeah. straight. Are you using the square or the filbert? The, the round still, filbert. Oh, no, back to the flat. Oh, I didn't switch Yeah, back. we switched to the flat. That's I'm, okay. I missed that. Because the flat brush, the square, will give you that shape. Straight edge. No yes. wonder I was struggling. Yeah, that's why your buildings are up. But I like it, though. That's <laughs> it, good. They have their own character it now. It works. All right, so I am going back to the filbert brush the, <laughs> for the orange. I know Not it's me. okay. <laughs> I gotta keep an eye on you. You know, <laughs> I'm running free right your now. Your buildings are a little rounded, but it's okay. It's still, it's your style. I like it. Oh, well, it is today. <laughs> no rough edges with Alan. I like it. No, not today. All right, I'm going into my orange with my filbert brush, and I'm coming in around that moon. And you can see with the round brush, it just gives you nice round shapes. Coming in like this. And then I also want to kind of cross pollinate those colors too. So I'm going to take that orange and I'm going to extend that around onto the blue here and there. It kind of gives it like a little glowing effect. And then I'm coming around, I think we're going to use a liner brush for that. So let's do the, the bigger brush here. And then I'm going to just throw in, I'm going to mix some of the gold with the orange. I don't want it white is orange for down here. I'm just throwing in a couple little brush strokes just here and there just to add a little bit of that color. Picked up my black by accident there. Just a little bit of those little accents there and then same here. Just coming in and just throwing in just a couple little brush strokes with that orange and then I will come in here. This is a bigger one so I used still the big brush but I'm going to grab my liner again to do the smaller. I got to get my liner for the black because I like your fountain house. Yeah looks. and you can do that la later too. You can get your other colors okay. if you want. Now when I do this I want these little spiral shapes so I, instead of laying the brush down. I'm going to hold the brush completely vertical like this and just go like this and let the tip of the brush, you see I just keep going yeah. around and around and around and that just creates again a little bit of a glowing effect 
And I'm doing that around each one. And oops, come in here, just like that. And I'm adding a little bit of yellow also, just to make it pop a little bit. And again, they don't have to be a continuous circle. It can be just like the brush strokes in the circle pattern. And then I'm going to do that with the white also. And I'm not even clean. I'm not even rinsing the brush. I'm just, well, Whoa. I did a little bit, but I'm going to. <laughs> I'm not ready for that advanced course. No, and I'm doing the same thing with the white. Now, I'm not coming around. If you can see on the design, I'm not coming all the way around in a circle with the white. I'm just doing little accents just here and there, okay? So let's see, white, I'm gonna add a little one here, here. And this is going to blend in with the other color. So you'll get maybe a light orange, a light yellow, and that's okay. So I'm just, the, the quicker you do this as far as just picking it up, you can see I'm lifting the brush and that gives me those little tails, the little streaky brush strokes. That's what makes it interesting. And I'm just eyeing it where I feel like I need that little highlight. And then my, I have my, now there's some of my black is still wet around my fountain. So it might end up pulling it in a little, which it did. I'll clean that off. So you might want to wait until things are a little drier to get your fountain in there. And then. My gray's a little darker, I yeah, saw. I got to add a little white. Yeah, so I'm going back to the blue and I'm adding a little bit of the white, the ultramarine blue, a little bit of the white, and I'm going to just hit some highlights on the buildings just to pick out and define the shape a little. Just like that. And the PPG building would have maybe a little bit more white on it. So that's all we're doing here is just picking out, just to suggest where they are and then let's see a little black to trim this okay and we have to add touches a little bit not as much a little bit of the orange and the yellow in the water just like that same brush stroke and then I'm going to just add a couple the white one's mostly where the fountain is because the white of the fountain I could be reflecting. We could do a couple here and there. And if you want to, you can do a few little wiggly little brush strokes like this. I'm turning my brush horizontally and you can just do something like that too. You could do that with the white. You could do that with any of the colors. Just mix it, mix it in. Now I want to Okay, so everything, everything is done except for our little dots. Oh, wait, I forgot my little, the little spire or whatever that little on. High mark building. High mark building, yes, thank you, Kim. <laughs> I knew she'd come up with it, I was trying. I was getting there, my brain didn't come up as fast. High mark building, and then, but we're going to add our little dots. We like to do our polka dots here, right? I Remember can't how wait, I did the polka yes. dots? So, but I'll, I'll catch you up with everything too. The so, bottom of the brush. Yes. So we're using, we're going to do white first and then the yellow. So we have some white polka dots in the buildings. But what I'm doing is instead of just putting them any place in the buildings, I'm going to do them in rows like the suggestion of, to represent say some, oops, that one was crooked, some windows. You can see there. Some vertical, we could do some horizontal as well, but I'm just doing them in some rows that. If your brush is wider at the bottom, the dots will be larger. If you want them smaller, just put a little less paint or use a different brush. Oh, I could see I dripped some paint in there before uh -uh. too, so that's okay. That's my little dot in the sky. And I'm using, oh, we have them around the fountain. Kind of like the little kind of like little representing the, the little lights around there. Yeah. And I'm using yellow. When you do this, like really dip into your paint. You want a lot of paint on the brush, on the back. And now I'm just doing my little yellow dots. You can do white dots in the sky too. 
like stars. I'm just using yellow, but I might, I might mix it. And remember, your eye will go to the yellow. So wherever you put these dots, it helps pull your eye around. It's kind of cute. I don't know. I think I'm going to add a couple little white ones. And then, let's see. Maybe I feel like then you look at it, kind of see what it needs. Uh, I do want to make sure I have a larger white dot in the center of each one of these circles. Okay. Now I can see a, some pencil lines on mine. So I'm going to make sure the Cover yellow, them. yeah, the, the yellow is more transparent. So I'm going to, if you add a little white to the yellow, that will cover those lines. Uh. How are you doing over there, Kim? Oh, catching up, but I'm fine. No, take your time. We're good. That looks good. Okay. So let's see. And then I feel like maybe I just might want to just a couple little orange. Not as much as the blue. Just I gotta here get and there. the orange out. I'm falling behind. No, you're good. <laughs> like I said, we just have to get this done. You know. Beat our hour. We'll beat yeah, the hour. Yeah, but we can finish them and show them done. Yes. And some of this, the orange on top of the blue, tends to look a little brown. So as it dried, I'm just going back in and I'm adding the orange again. Did I forget anything? And that's all. I just, I would say you just see where you want any little details. You can, sometimes if you walk away and then look at your painting, you'll see, oh, okay, that's what it needs, you know, and just look at it again and yeah, um, see where you want any little highlights or shadows. I just throw a couple little white streaks in here. And And I would say that's pretty much it for mine. Just wow. a little bit of that aqua without mixing it, too. I feel like, eh, I kind of like that color, too. There you go. Why not, right? I'm noticing the, the more flip. colors you look at, yeah. the more you yeah. put in there. I know. I see this pattern. See, you have to learn when to stop. But I like it. It looks good, I think. And then as it dries, if I tried to go over the... Um, some of the black areas where I'm cleaning up the edge of the buildings, it may smudge the black. I'm going to try this right here to clean that up a little. Uh, or, or you could just wait till it dries. And then always sign your name or initials, or you can do that I'll on the back side. I'll just put AL on the back. Yeah. That looks a little big, but I could, did that. So, okay. We have our oranges. So I mixed the colors there, our little dots. Let's see here. And I just feel like maybe that blue, right here, I need a little bit of that blue to show. See, then I end up with a different color on my brush and then I start yeah. working with it again. I'll look at it again and see how it comes up, but I think it's pretty close. It's not going to look exactly like our design, but I think I'm good. Can we flip our paintings around just to see the progress? Sure. And yeah. then we'll make sure you guys finish them and we'll show the end result too. I love your style. You do have a certain style. You do. <laughs> you guys are great. Whoa. Yay. Yay. So these aren't done yet, but we're getting there. We're working but on look them. Look how great. I love it. Alan, you do. You have a very um, unique style. No, your brush strokes, they're very, like, masculine kind of, but yet oh, thank you. Um, a lot of energy, I think, in your, your work. I love it. All thank right. You. Well, I am passionate about this, thanks to you. Yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Yeah. But we're going to finish. We're going to take the time. We're going to finish your paintings, and we'll show them. Okay. But, um, is there anything else, Kim, you'd like to say? Oh, no. Or? Just delighted. I love Pittsburgh, and I can't wait to hang this up. And I say get the kits and then go down and visit the city. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a great idea? Yeah. Yes. yes. And let's join Kim on some of her yes, passports come to on a tour. tour. I know. Every time I see one, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I need to go on that one. I need to go on that one. So <laughs> You're always, always welcome. I know. You're always we welcome. It. And thank you, Alan, as always, for You're being a welcome. great co-host and artist and, and uh, all. You always <laughs> do well. So uh, that's it. So we will, um, our next episode, episode seven, is going to be our Groovy Cat. Whoa. Right? Cool. Groovy Cat and our special guest. 
She works with animals. She's an animal advocate in the Pittsburgh area. You'll have to see next episode. So special guest. I, I like Kim's better than mine. I like Ellen's oh, too. Oh no, I like You're everybody's. Just, has nice. a personality. Yeah. Just like Pretty. Pittsburgh. Yes. Has a personality. Nice. Thank you so much. Cheese to the camera. Good job. Good job. What fun. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank you for much. being here. Thanks for being We're a great really, guest. What yes. a joy. And we'll link your websites and social media. Thank you. To the, uh, on the uh, end of this, in the credits. Thank you so yes. much. Okay. You helped me tweak it. Looks I came good. Up with this. I love it. My six pain. I'm gonna call yes. you Alan Van Gogh. Whoa! <laughs> I'm keeping my ear. <laughs> okay. <laughs>